you guys, it's your favorite gold miner, prospector, and geologist, Jeff Williams. And today I got you out in the heart of Arizona, and I'm gonna take you around some of the older mining districts and show you what you should be looking for if you wanna get out there and try to find gold on your own that the old timers left behind. I wanna tell you about these things. They're called teddy bear or trolla cactuses. Now, a lot of you guys know about these things, but there's a lot of people out there that don't know about these things. These are extremely dangerous. Don't even come close to them, and if you see patches of them in the hillsides, don't go near them. They drop off these little round balls that are just filled with these barbs, and the barbs have got hooks on the end of them. And if you get them in your clothing, your shoes, you're gonna have a heck of a time getting them out. And and if you get them in your skin, you're gonna need pliers to pull them out. And if you fall in one of these things, they're gonna have to metaflight you out. These things might look cuddly like a teddy bear, but I can tell you they're far from it. <laughs> All right, now the first thing you should do is you should look for the old gold mining districts, USGS reports on Google before you head out. That's the first thing anybody should do. And look around and see which one's closest to your area. Find out the type of gold they were mining and what it was traveling in. This will give you a leg up. Then you get boots on the ground and you say, hey, I know exactly what they were mining in. And this is a good example. Look, I got a cut right here. See this cut? I know it don't look like much, but it's a cut. And I've got quartz in the rock. See the quartz on the ground? And I've got an active gold mine on the hill. This is a perfect area. And according to my research, they were pulling out free mill gold. So this is the area that I wanna check. And look at this, look, look, look. See that? That's a starter shaft. See that? They were gonna start dropping this shaft down. See that? And what are they hunting? They're hunting this quartz vein right here. You see it? It's not much, but if they were chasing it, that means there must be value in it. Now, like I said earlier, make sure that the district that you're looking up says that it's free mill gold with very little to no sulfides. You don't want sulfides because those can be a pain in the butt because you gotta roast them. And you don't want to do that. And you want to know what the gang material is. Usually it's quartz, but it could be anything like limonite or calcite. And when you get out to the district, you're going to look for the old workings like these. This is perfect. That's called an arostra. You see it? This is what they use to mill the ore. It's a primitive mill, kind of like a Chilean mill. A lot of times they would drag rocks around on top of these rocks. They would fill this thing up with water and mercury, and then they would put the ore in there and let the rocks grind it all up. And the way that they would get this thing to run is you could have a horse or manpower, or sometimes you'll see where they use an old differential up here, and then they'll power it by some crude one cylinder, two cylinder engine or even steam powered. But when you find these things, you know you're on a winner because they only use these things where they had free mill gold and that the gold was easy enough to get out of rock by simple crude methods of grinding like this. Now, when you find this kind of thing, what you want to do is first of all, don't destroy it, but look in the cracks. Look down in here. Yeah, because if there's any gold or amalgam left, it's gonna be stuck down in these cracks. You can see where somebody's already cleaned out this crack right here. But the people who built this, they cemented it all together. You see that? Because they didn't want any of that amalgam to get down in there where they couldn't get it back out. So this is where you need to be backpacking and sweeping and trying to get whatever material you can out of there. Now we're gonna go ahead and sweep some of this material out and then I'll pan it out later and see if there's any gold in it. But like I said, don't destroy them, but you can clean them out. These are always a good sign. And also look for an area where they were dumping out their tailings because a lot of times they didn't get all the gold out of it and there might be gold left behind. And not only that, but the color of the tailings will indicate the type of ore that you should be looking for. And look at this bowl that I got right here. See that? I'm gonna say that's a mercury trap bowl. I'm gonna clean him out too. Now for you folks out there that don't know what amalgam is, in the old days, the old timers would use mercury because gold, when it's really clean, fresh out of the rock, will stick beautifully to mercury. They have an affinity for each other. So when they do stick together, they make this cottage cheese silvery paste. We call that amalgam. And when you want to get your gold out of that, you put it in a retort and you heat the mercury and the mercury will evaporate off of that gold and leave a sponge behind. Of course, it's very dangerous and I don't recommend it unless you know what you're doing. Take a look at this. This looks like where they were living. Yeah, miner's quarters. Ooh, this is a big cabin too. Holy cow. Oh, and I got some more quartz vein up there on, on the back of their wall rock. And they might even have a stack of low grade up here. See where they're driving this little tiny drift in right here? 
to get up into this material. See all this altered material here? We're standing on top of andesite and this andesite's been altered, see that? And that is what got them excited. And they found little stringers of quartz. See this chalcedonic silica running through here? And I got a dike right here running all the way up the hill. See that? And they trenched it here too. They said, well, you gotta find it. And that's the easiest way to find it is by trenching. And it looks like they had buildings up here too. See the foundations? Oh yeah. They were looking into here too. See that? Fall on a hanging wall. I got a shaft there. Yeah, you can see the red alteration zone right there. Now, these are perfect. Sample them. A lot of times if it wasn't high grade enough, they walked away from it. But it might be high grade for you because if it's over one ounce per ton, that mine will pay for itself for you. Especially when gold prices are at $2,300 an ounce. And there's that big old mine on the hill. They're gonna take that entire mountain. You can see their heap leach pad right there. It looks like they're building a pyramid, but they're not. And all that is very low grade ore and they're sprinkling it with sodium cyanide and water and it percolates through, dissolves the gold like water and sugar, runs to the bottom of an impervious pad. You can see it on the bottom there, that black pad. Then they suck it all up and then they run it into the mill. Now in the old days, they'd use a marrow crow process to get the gold out of that cyanide. But today, they use activated carbon to get that darn thing out. And then after that, they do electro -winning. That way they can get 99.9% .9 pure on that gold. Am I missing anything? Nothing that I can see. Okay. Hey, let's load up because I gotta go see some more mines. And I know you gotta see some more mines, but I'm not gonna do anything until you smash that like button. Smash it hard! Ooh, and look what I found here. Foundations. Oh, that means that what? They have a mine here. That is so cool, look at that. Nice. It's kind of weird though, there's no wood in the middle. And I've got a mine dump right over there. And look at that, I brought my friends with me too. Are you hungry? It's beef jerky. He doesn't like, oh, they're man. so pretty. <laughs> they're so pretty. And here I've got this concrete slab, probably a assay lab was here of some kind, probably a forge to sharpen the bits. But we're gonna head up to that at it and I'm gonna take some samples from there too. And if it's open, we'll take a look around. Now all this rock you see here, andesite. And where did it come from? That huge volcanic neck right there, or plug. And for some reason, they wanted to drive right directly into it. And I can see prospects all over the hill. They probably had a, some kind of a compressor sitting here to support the mine for the drills. Look at that gobbing on the wall. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful gobbing work. See that? Oh, that's nice. Oh, somebody's pants. Drop them pants, boy. Oh, Drake's from Louisiana. He knows all about dropping pants. Oh man, it stinks in there. All right, I'm sending Drake in. He, he's, oh, yeah. he says he wants to get wet. Wait. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. All right, well, the burrows have been using it for a watering hole, so it's uh, got a lot of activity in here. And it smells terrible. Keep an eye out. What is that? Our little friends. Look at all the water. It's right where they're coming to. Water. But it goes back there a ways. We could make it without getting wet, but it just keeps going. More water. Ew. Wow, look at the size of that volcanic neck. Huge! And somebody climbed all the way up here. The prospect. It looks like whoever was up here saw the andesite. You can see all the phenocris in there, alkali feldspars, all that. But look, you can see a little bit of red mineralization in it. So they must have climbed all the way up here because of that right there. Those guys were tough as nails. I can't even imagine that. Think about it, you got a box of dynamite, blasting caps, a hand steel, and a five pound sledge. And you're coming up here because you saw some red in the rock. That's just plain old nasty andesite. Nothing special about that. But I do see some red. A little bit of red. I don't see a lot of inclusions in it, but we're gonna find out. Now this makes sense. I've got andesite here, and then look, what is this? That's rhyolite, right there, that's rhyolite. So I've got exposures 
and dikes cutting through this andesite of rhyolite. That's why they're here. Because rhyolite has gold in it. Or it's very known to carry gold, I should say. Now that makes sense. What a view. Yeah, they cut this in rhyolite. And we're in about maybe 30 feet. You can see I had a blast there. <coughs> blast there, 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 and there. You can obviously tell that they're blasting this line right here. And they're trying to get into this mineralization. You see all the reds in there? Hydrothermal fluids, once again, have permeated the rock. Look I mean, at that. Maybe to... that, but that's not enough to get excited. All right, you guys see what I see? Yes, I know, it's caliche. But look where it's hitting. That's right, see the contact zone? Isn't that cool? Right here. That's your contact zone. And that is a good place to sample for gold because all this stuff, look, bam, bam, got smashed right into this, whoosh. And then if there's any gold, it's gonna be collected down here at the very lowest point. So right in here will be a nice place to sample for gold. Right in through there on top of all this andesite bedrock. See that? So keep that in mind when you're out driving around and you see anything like this, especially if the cobbles are really big. What the heck does that say? Credo que paso a certia. What does that mean? Retired extremely dangerous senior citizens. <laughs> what the? What are they going to do? Gum you to death? All right, so let's take a look. Who's in there? Who's the bar? Bartender, give me something to drink. What do you got for me? I already drank it all. Ah, dang it. What's that? No tagging. Oh, I don't know what that means. Hey, this is pretty cool. Rules. Rules are down here. No graffiti, no junk. Please don't hang or attach anything. Even claim jumpers? I'm going to hang me one. Ooh, look who I see back here. <laughs> of course, I got Drake over here. You should be the bartender, Drake. So if you happen to find yourself out here in the middle of Arizona and you come upon this little resting place, stop, wet your whistle. But leave it cleaner than you found it because a group of people went to a lot of work to put this here and I don't want to see anything happen to it, okay? Enjoy, but don't destroy. Leave no trash. And while we're on the subject, Rez wants to thank Frank, Bob1, Bob2, Joe, Michael, Chris, Sal, Jimmy, John, and Modelo, and anyone else we forgot. Fort Ray. All right, so I got myself a watering hole. Believe it or not, there is water out here in the middle of the desert. You just have to know where to look. And in this particular district, wherever the bedrock comes up high enough, you'll have all these natural aquifers feeding on top of the bedrock. And you can see the bedrock right over here. It's that green andesite. And it's a natural collection point for all the wildlife too. I mean, there's burrows everywhere here. Imagine what's in this water, huh? Yeah, I bet you want to drink some of it, huh? Nasty, salty water. Trust me, and you're in the desert and dying, you'll drink this water. I'm not saying it won't make you sick, but <laughs> you'll drink it. All right, so this is from the Arostra. Let's see what we got. Looks like I got lead. Do the Williams wiggle. What the heck is that? It is super heavy. Let me get my glasses on. Look at that. Some of these pieces look like lead, but I'm not sure what these are. I'm going to have to smelt them to find out what they are. Because like this one, this don't look like lead. That one's hanging behind. These are no-brainer. These look like lead. See that? That one, I'm not sure. That one's lead for sure. These I'm not sure about. I'll put those in the furnace and find out what they are. Okay, now we got another bag of material from that cleachy bed that has impacted the side of that huge andesite intrusion that we saw earlier. Yeah, I know, I should have classified, huh? Water's not deep enough. All right, that's about as far as I want to go. Let's take a look. Oh, that water feels nasty. That water feels nasty. A lot of black sand. You see the black sand in there? Let's see if we got anything else. Right there. Got a little piece of gold. You see it? 
Little tiny fragments there, there. I uh, got some more of my buddies up there on the hill and over there. Oh, look at the size of this hoist platform. See that? There's my foot for comparison. Oh, look at the size of that quartz vein. That is a good size quartz vein. That's got to be about well, eight feet at least average. And I think the assay is at two ounce per ton down in the mineral zone. Official depth test. All right, here we go. And say, oh, sorry, little bird, didn't mean to scare you. Don't forget, at the end of every month, we give away Gold Monster 1000. We give away bags of pay dirt, and we host three-day gold mining tours. And if you want to get involved with that, all you're going to do is look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks something like that. You're going to click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flynn. You know what I'm going to say, huh? So come on, let's go!